Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, a Tuesday edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody uh, is doing well. Um, you know, here we are again, right? Here we are again. Uh, we are on the bottom of the range um, in the NASDAQ 100, right? NASDAQ composite. We're here, right? We're here again. A um, couple of takeaways. It's a couple of takeaways from the day and kind of where we are uh, possibly going forward. Number one, if you guys remember yesterday's session, okay, um, everything was in the middle of the ranges, okay? There was very, very aggressive areas where the market got pulled. Uh, there were very, very aggressive area where speculation money uh, still came in and the market spiked. So we had kind of everything here, right? We literally had kind of everything here. And going into today's session, when the market was up, you know, 300 points, again, uh, the, the big footnote of the day was uh, supposedly Russia found the cure for COVID. Again, if you've ever dealt with, uh, and I'm Russian, right? I grew up around Russians. Uh, if you ever dealt uh, everything that was going on in the universe, you kind of know that if the Russians really did find the cure for anything, okay, uh, they were going to definitely hold the world hostage um, for any type of aggressive vaccine, obviously. So the market gapped up 300 points. The market started coming back in. And we started seeing a lot of similarities that we saw yesterday. And that similarity was that a lot of these names just couldn't get above supply. So the names that had big run-ups, uh, Amazon, okay, uh, Amazon couldn't rally, Roku uh, couldn't rally, right? All these stocks couldn't rally. You had Beyond, uh, couldn't rally. Even the stronger names that attempted to have rallies, uh, such as an Apple of the world, uh, such as in the videos of the world, again, they kind of came to a stop. And today was kind of one of those days that you saw the potential aggressive nature of what could happen. And what we saw today was a lot of big violence to the downside. Uh, even the names that were strong early, and there were some strong names. You had Facebook uh, that was very, very strong at, at some point. Uh, you had Roku that was strong. Boeing uh, was very, very strong. You had all these names, right? All these names uh, that potentially could have led us higher. And the question that we had kind of yesterday that we asked, I go, well, is everything else in the market going to kind of pull everything up, right? All the beta names, all the technology names, or is technology going to pull everything down? Again, remember, we had this really, really big run uh, into the market, and now the point is what happens next? And today was a perfect example of, again, that technical analysis does matter. Um, it's very, very important, important to have an opinion, okay? I think that is uh, crucial, and we, we talk about this every single day, but the most important part is, you know, to understand that you have to be flexible. Let's say, for example, for tomorrow's session, I'm pretty sell biased. OK, but again, that's my opinion. Uh, you know, what, the one thing that we've seen over and over again in this kind of George Costanza market, every single time the bears look like they're about to seize control. Here comes the bulls. Right. They, they put the magic wand and everything rallies again. But we're here. You know, we're, we're here again on rising support. So I think going into tomorrow, of, of course I'm sell biased, okay? Uh, I'm definitely sell biased, but the question is, are we going to get that confirmation channels to confirm our sell bias? And that is again, the big question. And again, if you look back all the way, right? Literally all the way back to the March lows, you'll see a lot of the same similarities. They, they come back to the bottom of the range, and they rally. They come back to the bottom of the range. They rally, so forth and so on, so forth and so on, so forth and so on, so forth and so on. The only day that they actually confirmed to the downside was on July the 23rd, and the Qs went from 256 all the way down to 251. And then a day later, we reclaimed the rising support again and started going back higher. So 
This is kind of like Groundhog's Day into tomorrow. And the most important part for me for tomorrow is, again, I'm not going to anticipate every move, okay? Um, I'm going to watch the action tomorrow. If we get a gap opening and the names that I am definitely watching uh, to the downside today, okay, um, for tomorrow's session, those are going to be the names that I'm going to be concentrating on. And the most important part of any day that you are looking for a macro move, it's very, very important to kind of sit there and wait for it to play out. The last thing I want to do tomorrow is wake up in the morning. Um, I have my strong opinion. I have my strong bias. I'm watching the technical analysis. I'm watching the channels to the bottom and start predicting or forecasting what's going to happen next. It's very crucial that again, being wrong is okay. If I'm wrong tomorrow and it's an up day, fine, right? Fine. It'll be a little harder because again, just where everything is and their macro channels. But the most important part of tomorrow's session, at least for me is wait, sit patiently, wait for these channels to confirm, understand that again, this George Costanza market does have ways to kind of throwing a curveball and going right back up. But the most important part is being flexible, staying flexible, waiting for confirmation and letting the market dictate where to go. Again, opinion to the sell side. Now let's see everything confirmed. Um, I thought today's action reflected a lot uh, what we saw yesterday, okay? Uh, aggressive pulls, uh, very, very aggressive pulls. As I'm sitting here recording, I'm seeing Tesla run up 70, 80 points. I haven't read the news. I kind of know what the news is. That kind of obviously defeats the trade for tomorrow, uh, which kind of sucks as I'm recording this. But again, I'm, I'm assuming if it's gapping up like this, I'm assuming it's the S&P that we talked about. But again, it's something that I'm assuming um, I have to look at the news, but everything else, uh, everything else that we are looking at uh, from yesterday into today's session, again, saw the aggressive nature of what happens uh, when the market does confirm downside channels. And if you look at uh, just from where we are from the technical areas, again, outside of the queues, you're really not going to see, you know, what potentially could happen. Again, you had this really, really big breakout on the IWM. It's resting. You had this really, really big breakout on the on the spies again you got a back test it, it did close below the five day moving average that is a little bit of a red flag again it's very very important to kind of watch uh you know this 332 area 332 331 area uh, on the spies again if the bears start seizing control again nobody's talking about uh, a swan dive you know into 300 all we're talking about is an orderly back test uh, right back to the 10 day moving average initially again we just kind of want to take uh baby steps Little by little, little by little. Uh, if you look at um, if you look at the diamonds again, very very strong. They broke out. They rested today. Again, granted, they gave up uh, 300 points, uh, 350 points to the upside. So that's a little bit of a red flag. Maybe a reversal bar. But again, the most important part is again taking it day by day, having an opinion, and see what you happen. So tomorrow, I think. Outside of Tesla, because again, I haven't read the news. I kind of have an idea what it is because I'm watching this thing uh, move up aggressively. But if you look at all the other beta names today, you'll see a lot of similarities. You, you see Amazon trading to the bottom of the range. Again, is this going to confirm tomorrow? That's the plan, right? That's the plan. Any gap of tomorrow uh, that is sold that confirms today's channel will go lower. We'll see. You know, look at Netflix. Netflix uh, first closed below the 50-day moving average. Obviously, that's negative. We're going to watch that for tomorrow. Very, very clean, right? Very, very clean action there. Uh, Roku, again, another name that's attempting to break down. The only reason it held up today was this 143 uh, rising Bollinger Band. So again, we're going to look for confirmation for tomorrow's cycle as well. So it's a pretty clean day for tomorrow uh, as far as setups. Okay, I, I think it's pretty clear. Um, all we need to do is kind of wait for the setups, wait for the confirmations, second entries, and again, uh, strike with extreme prejudice and confidence knowing that technical analysis is usually going to provide a pretty good guide of what's going to happen next. Uh, if you look at the pivots today, uh, again, you'll, you'll see a lot of really strong uh, aggression, okay, very, very strong aggression today. And, and again, it was, it was predominantly, uh, it was definitely predominantly to the downside. There, there were some um, long plays today, like, like Boeing, for example, like Facebook, 
Um, you know, not many, right? Not many, but you can see the aggressive nature of the selling and you'll see a little bit of muted action uh, to the upside. So let's talk about this. So uh, BYND uh, 126.80, 126.50. If it builds below, it can flush. Here is BYND, right? So here is the 26.80, uh, right? So here is the 26.80 right here, right? 26.80. Uh, 2650 again went all the way down to 25 um, very very strong move uh, I, I, I put in the wrong price guys so I apologize it was 3100 uh, 3100 on Amazon it wasn't 3000 so I apologize um, you know closed at the lows of the day um, you know closed at the lows of the day again we're going to be you know traded all the way down to the 3070s we're, we're definitely watching tomorrow's uh, downside channel for more uh, extended selling but but again you kind of get the idea here uh, overstock got destroyed not only did overstock got destroyed overstock uh, I think they did an offering after the close uh, so here it is uh, 90 and a half 90 if it builds below can flush uh, here was overstock right here was overstock, here was the 90, the pre-market, and traded all the way down, uh, traded all the way down to 85, and after the close, again, uh, it's kind of moving lower uh, on that offering. Uh, shop got hit, uh, 986 if it builds below can flush. Uh, here is shop, right? So here is the 986, right? Here's the 986, and went all the way down to 964. So you can see very, very strong aggression uh, especially at the open, uh, V-Ray didn't do anything. I think it traded to like 360, 361, kind of fell apart. Uh, NIO didn't even get close to the 1590-16 area. Uh, Boeing was very strong today. Uh, Boeing 185.20 needs to build. Here was Boeing. Here's the 185.20, right? Here's the 185.20 and traded as high as almost to 190. Big move there on Boeing. Uh, shop, yeah, Ro Roku got hit as well, uh, 148.50, 147.50, the two areas of support, if it builds below, can flush more, right, so here is Roku, right, so here is Roku, here is the whole 148.50, 147.50 was yesterday's low, and went all the way down to the 143 level, really got hit very, very hard, so again, this is kind of the effect of what we're looking for, uh, for tomorrow's session, especially if all these stocks uh, start to confirm macro. Uh, Groupon was actually a pretty, a pretty nice little move. Uh, 2680, 27 needs to build. Again, not a huge move because, again, the market is weak. You can see the market's weak. So here's the 2680, 27 level. Uh, traded up to 2750s. Again, not a big move. Again, everything got pulled uh, later, obviously. So that was that. Uh, FSLY, I caught a pretty nice move here. 75, it builds below, can flush. Um, I covered, my lowest cover was in the 73s. Uh, so here is first uh, FSLY. I still like it for tomorrow. Um, so here is the FSLY. It took out this whole 75 range, uh, traded down to actually 7250s. Uh, I still, I definitely, definitely still like it for tomorrow. Uh, FSLY take on the way down. Nice flush, new highs. Uh, you know, I said 2770s potential traded to 2750s. Uh, Facebook, again, not a big move. Again, it really did show uh, what happens. Uh, it really does show what happens, um, you know, when there's a buyer strike, even strong stocks get pulled. Uh, so 265, a supply needs to build. A buyer is coming in for the 250 calls. Again, only went up less than a buck. Again, that's the whole point. So here is the 65, right? Here's a 65 traded, you know, just traded to about 266 and then got really, really pulled with everything else. So very, very important to understand where the at least sentiment meter is uh and the same thing roku uh, roku 152 needs to build uh only ran up a quarter right literally only ran up a quarter and then faded pretty back uh hard pretty you know, pretty aggressively uh amazon obviously never got back to the upside here as well uh tesla again you know again i'm, I'm pretty confident i already know the news before i read it a 1385 line in the sand you know went down about 15 points uh, this would have been the number, right? This would have been the number, but again, I have a suspicion I already know what the news is. Uh, SPAQ never got up there as well. So again, I, you know, I, I'm definitely setting up uh, sell bias for tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be very, very interesting to see if the bulls uh, can muster. Again, it's very, you know, we've been here before. It's kind of Groundhog's Day, uh, but it's going to be very, very important to see if the bulls can, you know, not only hold. Um, you know, not only hold this 60 minute, you know, 60, uh, excuse me, uh, this rising 
uh, daily wedge, but you can see it off the 60 minute channel. It's exactly the same view. So if you have uh, a confirmation both on the 60 and the daily charts, you could have some uh, aggressive potential swan dives. But again, we wait, we're not forecasting, we're not, uh, you know, we're not trying to will these stocks lower. We want to see confirmation. Uh, we want to make sure that we are entering these trades properly. Again, if I'm wrong, it's not going to cost me any money. Again, I say this all the time. You could be wrong a thousand percent, literally. Just don't be wrong financially. Don't be stubborn. Wait for these plays to play out. Guys, have a great night, everybody. Uh, I'm going to go look at the, the Tesla news. Have a great night. And with God's help, we'll see you all tomorrow. Take care. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.